Bible said, give the Lord glory due unto his name. Give the Lord glory due unto his name. We are here to pray for lost glory. But the Spirit of God, amen, is saying in my spirit, before you ask me to restore your lost glory, you give me glory. Before you ask the Lord to restore lost glory, you give the Lord glory due his name. How many times have we stolen glory? Because we refuse to worship, we refuse to praise, we refuse to bless, we refuse to exalt his name. He's saying, before you ask me to restore your glory, you give me my glory. The Bible says that you pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And so many times we ask God for what we ourselves have denied God. We ask God for what we ourselves have denied or refused to give God. The Bible says, you bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not what his benefits. The word of God tells us all that men will give thanks to God for his goodness to men, amen? For he is good and his mercy is endured forever. So before we ask the Lord to restore lost glory, we shouldn't deny God his glory. The Bible says all glory, all honor, all power belongs to the Lord. Amen. All honor, all glory, all power belongs to the master, belongs to the living word, belongs to Jesus. The Bible says that they bow down heaven and earth and they worship the king of kings. And they say to you alone belong the glory. To you alone belong the honor. How many of you, amen, today, every day have given God glory? Have you given him glory for your life this morning? Have you given him glory for your health this morning? Have you given him glory for, amen, what he's doing and what he has done? Have you given him glory for the last breakthrough? Have you given him glory for those miracles? Have you given him glory? Are you so concerned with what he's not done that you refuse to give him glory for what he has done? The Bible says that many did not come back and give him glory. They did not recognize it. They did not extol him. And Jesus himself continued to give God glory, yes. even in the midst of situations, circumstances where there was not enough to feed the 5,000. He gave glory to God. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I praise you. So God is saying, before you ask me for restoring your lost glory, give unto me my glory. Amen. Give unto me my glory. It tells us in Psalm 29, amen, that give glory due. Give glory due. It is due him. It is due him. By his will we exist. By his will the earth was created. By his will you were made. By his will you were kept. By his will you came forth and came in. By his will you were sustained. No matter what the enemy took you through, by his will. Yes. If it wasn't for God on your side, the Bible says you would have been swallowed alive. The word of God said, unless God had been on my side, I would have been swallowed alive. When men rose against you, when they did divination, sorcery, when their attacks came against you, you. When those things, the devil came for your life, yes. you were here today because God backed you up. Hallelujah. Right. God backed you up. So the Spirit of God is saying he wants us to remember him today and give him glory. Glory belongs unto the Lord. The Bible says, amen, that no flesh shall glory in my presence. The Bible says that heaven and earth, they bow and they give unto him the glory. So people of God, I want to give you an opportunity now to give unto the Lord glory due to his name. Glory is not due a man. Glory is not due a woman. Glory is not due a pastor. Glory is not due a minister. Glory is not due the anointed. Everything came from God. In fact, the Apostle Paul said, what do you have? You did not first receive from the Lord. What do you have to your name? What do you have in your marriage? What do you have in your accounts? What do you have in health? What do you have in acumen? What do you have in wisdom? What do you have in ideas? What do you have in dreams? What do you have you did not first receive from God? So you give him glory. You give him glory that he gave it to you. You give him glory that he's kept you. You give him glory that he's defended you. You give him glory. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We are here today to sanctify this Sabbath day, to sanctify this Sunday, and to sanctify to the Lord and say, Lord, we're taking time out from family. We're taking time out from work. We're taking time out from the busyness of our schedule and we're coming into your house to give you glory. We are taking time to show you, you deserve glory. You deserve at least one day off out of seven days. God deserves it. He deserves every creature to take time off in order to come and worship him. Do you know how many people are on Black Friday shopping and they refuse to come to the house of God to worship the king? They're asking God for breakthrough. They're asking God for deliverance. They're in the hospital. They're asking God for healing, but they've never taken time to give their creator glory. We are an unthankful, ungrateful people when you look at us in this generation. How many people go to the 
house of God. Many of us, we go to the house of God for what we want, but we don't go to the house of God for what he wants. He wants to receive glory. He wants you to come and serve him because he wants to receive glory. He wants you to become an usher because he wants to receive glory. He wants you to be a musician because he wants to receive glory. How many of you are saying, I'm invested in the house of God? So many believers, last night when I was praying, the Lord was saying to me, many people come into my house, but how many invest themselves? I was speaking to a lady and I said to her, the reason why God will bless you is because you invest yourself in the house of God. You invest yourself in the things concerning God. Many people, amen, do not give God glory. And yet on the day of accidents, on the day of war, they start pointing fingers. And God says, no, give me the glory first. He's going to release and restore our lost glory. But he's saying the first thing is don't deny him his glory. Don't deny him his praise. Don't deny him his thanksgiving. Don't deny him your thank, your, your praise. How? When was the last time you began to celebrate in your house? You began to dance in your house. You began to sing songs of appreciation to the almighty king. When was the last time you said, Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. I do not know what you're doing. I don't know how you would do it, but I give you the glory because it is you that saved me. It is you, amen, that caused me to be a, saved, a, a son of God or a child of God. It is you that revealed yourself to me. It is you that brought me out of my yes. mother's womb, said David. Glory be to God. We give you glory, Jesus. In the beginning is the word, the word was with God and the word was God. Amen. And through him all things were made. Amen. He was in the beginning with God and through him all things were made. Without him was nothing made that was made. Without him, nothing was made that was made. We give the one glory because he created all things. We give him glory because he created time. We give him glory because he created the heavens and the earth. We give him glory because he created the food you enjoy. He created the air you breathe. He created the water you drink. We give him glory because he created the diversity. We give him glory in the name of Jesus. Come on, people of God. Begin to lift up your voice and say, no foreign God. I will not allow another God to take the place of my God. I will not allow another king to take the place of my king. I will not allow a circumstance to take my attention because I have come to the house of God to give him glory. I have come to the house of God to give him praise. I have come to the house of God to give him honor. I have come to show Satan, irrespective of what you do in my life, there is a portion of my life reserved only for Jesus. There is a portion of my life reserved only for the king. There is a time and a place for all things. And this is my time and place to give him glory. Union City Church family, we are set up today even though we are delayed. We are set up today Amen. to give him glory. This is our time to come before the king. The Bible tells us each one appears in Zion. Each church and each believer, each child of God has an appointment with the king and the appointment is week upon week and you can decide to not to miss your appointment. This is the day of an appointment Amen. with the Lord of Lords and with the, with the the king of kings in the name of jesus and on this day of appointment the lord is saying give me glory on this day of appointment the lord is saying lift up your voice and give him the glory this is not the time of complaining this is not the time of complaining this is not the time of looking back this is not the time of looking around this is the time of looking up and saying lord another week has gone by because you kept me another week has yeah. gone by because you kept me yeah. you kept my family yeah. you've given me all that i can yes. do you've given me all that i can become i hope for tomorrow because you live because you live i will see tomorrow because of your word i have hope so i give you glory in the name of jesus i give you glory we give god glory not because all things go well at all times but because of who he is oh that man will give thanks to the lord for he is good because of who he is and his mercies endure forever we give him glory because he's a healing god he's a prayer answering god we give him glory because he cares and because he sent his only begotten son, we give him glory. Come on, people of God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you glory. I give you glory for our small beginnings. And I give you glory that our latter end shall greatly increase. I give you glory because you have sent us, Lord God. You have established us. And the Bible tells us, amen, he who began a good work in you, he shall perfect it to the coming of the Lord. If he has started it, he will finish it. In the name of Jesus, we give him glory. Even though you walk through the shadow of the valley of death, the Bible says, fear no evil, because God is still with you. As long as he's still in the boat, he will not capsize. As long as he's still in your life, you will not capsize. You will get to your destination according to his word. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I give you glory. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we give you glory that you're still in our boat. You may seem to be asleep, but because you are in the boat, you shall rebuke every wave. You shall rebuke all the storms, and you shall accelerate us to land in the name of Jesus. Because we serve a prayer answering God who knows where you're at, and he knows what you're going through. And he's saying, when it is my time, I will release the power and the authority. I will release the grace in the name of Jesus Christ. But I need you first and foremost to give me all the glory, to give me all the praise to humble yourself before me. It is written, if you will humble yourself and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will, amen, heal the land. We pray and pray and say, God, heal our land, heal our country, heal our family, heal my marriage, heal my cities, heal our communities. But the Lord is saying, have you ever given glory for that same land, country, land, communities, marriage, husband, wife, and children? Have you given God glory? Have you dedicated and said, Lord, I thank you for the nation I'm in. I thank you for the country I'm in. I thank you, Lord God, that you've even given us a country. You've even given us a place. You've given us a community. You've given us, Lord God, a family. You've given us a marriage. You've given us children. We give God glory first for the gift before we ask for more. In the name of Jesus. Before you ask for more, you give him glory. Before you ask for more, Jesus blessed God and he thanked God in John chapter 6 and he broke the bread and blessed it. Before he asked for more, he said thank you for the little. Before you ask for more, say thank you for the little. What is in your hands? It may not be enough, but before you ask for more, you give him glory. Before you ask for another child, you give him glory. Before you ask for another marriage, you give him glory. Before you ask for another job, you give him glory. You first of all, Give him glory of thanks for what he has given you before you ask for more. Hallelujah. This is what the Spirit of God is saying. Hallelujah. Give him the glory. Do not deny him the glory. Sometimes we're so vexed with God that we shut our hands, we shut our heart, we shut our mouth, we even shut off our seed, we shut off our presence. We cannot be found in the house of God. We cannot be found just to lift up holy hands. We cannot be found to praise him because we're upset. But God is saying glory is due me. It is due him. It is due the king. Hallelujah. Because we are here in this generation because he, he wills it. He could have sent somebody else. He's got yeah. 7 billion people who are on this earth and people are being born right this minute. He could have sent somebody else, but he sent you. He could have created somebody else, but he created you. So give him glory for your life. Give him glory for your circumstance. Give him glory for what you have. Give him glory for what you, you didn't lose, even though you lost many things. The yeah. things you didn't lose, give him glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we give you glory. We just take time now as a church to say thank you, to say we give you glory. No foreign God will we serve. The enemy is busily trying to say, bow down and serve me. He said to Jesus, bow down and serve me. Bow down and serve me. He's always sneaking to get the glory. He's always bringing circumstances to deceive you so that you pay attention more to the devil than you do to Jesus. The devil is a liar. We give the Lord glory. We exalt the name of the Lamb of God. The Bible says, if my, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. He needs a people that will praise. He needs a people that will pray. And he needs a people that will worship. A people that will bow down. A people that will say, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God that taken away the sin of the world when they ask you how you are you say i give god the glory yeah. when you go back to work even though you are hard pressed on every side you say lord i give you glory how was your weekend it was tough but i give god glory yeah. how is your child in the hospital all things are well i give him glory that he's healing her you begin to give god glory how are things going amen in, in, in your life even though you're in a negative situation like jesus you first of all give thanks and give him glory and say you know what yes this food may not be enough but i give you glory father that you have made a way even before i know which way to take you have created a way for me you have made a way of multiplication you have made a way to feed us you have made a way to pay off our bills you have made a way to see that all things end up well you have made a way of connection you have made a way of restoration you have made a way you are creating a way even when i see no way in the name of jesus and you give him the glory when the Lord can find you like David to give him glory and say, I will bless the Lord at all times, not only when he does well for me, but because he is God, I will bless the Lord at all times. When the Lord can find you like the three Hebrew boys who did not bow down and said, oh, King, we are not careful not to answer you in this matter. I will bless the Lord at all times. We will not bow to your system. Even though you persecute us, we will still lift up our voice and say, Jesus is Lord. Even though you want to come away from us, 
even though you want to inseminate us, we still say no. We give God glory. When Jesus can find the people that can give him glory, he can restore. He can restore. We're going to talk about restoration. Restoration is not the Lord taking you back to the way things were. It's God taking you back to his original plan. And some of us have never walked in the original plan of God. Sometimes the enemy has dealt with you from the womb. He has dealt with you from the time you were conceived. You were unwanted. You were rejected. There was a tempted abortion. Amen. They were abandoned by your parents. Whatever the circumstance is, you were adopted. You went into several homes. There can be some circumstances that are so rough to be able to weather that God is saying, I protected you and you fought through every one of them because I know that a day will come. I would restore you in full, not according to what people think, not according to even what you believe, but according to what I planned from the beginning of time. Hallelujah. And from eternity. Restoration is God giving into your life what he has written of you, what he has spoken of you, what he has willed of you. And the Bible says, I has not seen. First Corinthians 2, 9, amen. He has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart the things that God has designed for them that love him. Hallelujah. So when you love the Lord, praise God, God will begin to reveal to you the things he has designed for you by his spirit, things you never prepared for, things you never planned for. I did not plan to be a pastor. I definitely didn't plan to plant a church in Dallas, Texas. I did not plan many things in my life, but the Lord himself has ordained those things and brought those things to pass. And so there are things that you cannot know now that you will see happening as you continue to live a life that pleases God, amen, and that loves God and that serves God. He will show you things in Jesus' name, and he will restore you. Glory be to God. Heavenly Father, we give you glory. Holy Spirit, we give you the great glory. We say thank you because we know that you are perfect in power. There's a beautiful hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Amen. Early in the morning, my voice shall worship thee. And then it says in one of the verses, only you are holy. Amen. Only you are holy. I can't, I can't remember the other verse. But it says, uh, merciful and mighty, perfect in power, love and purity. That's one of the verses. Perfect in power. How many times have you said you're perfect in all your ways? You are perfect in all of your ways. I may not understand them. I do not like them. But you are perfect in all of your ways. You see, I say to people, what keeps you at the end to not only from the place of the promise into the place of the possession is not just faith for the promise. It is faith in the character of God. Mm. It is. What eventually pulls you through yes. is believing that God is good. Yes. It's believing that he cannot be unjust. Yes. It's believing that if he saw Ruth through, he would see me through. Yes. It's believing that there's no one written or found in all generations before we came who God was unfaithful to who went back to heaven and God had not done what he said he would do. There's no one in time that can hold God to, to, as a liar. Imagine. So I always used to say to myself many years ago when I was going through so much, and I said, Lord, but you cannot lie to me because I cannot be the first person created you lie to. It may take longer than you think, but it will come. And these are the days of Elijah. And the Spirit of God is saying, I want to release and restore your lost glory. Amen. But first and foremost, do not defraud me of mine. Amen. Do not defraud the King of his glory. Do not defraud him each and every morning as you wake up. Amen. Give him the glory. Go before him. Go on your knees. Praise him. Find a song to dance. It's amazing. You can find so much now on YouTube. Yes. I found a beautiful yes. song on YouTube. Amen. Um, I think it was heavenly language. But it's different. It was like doing yeah. an Afro beat. I was like, oh, this is good. You know, find things and give the Lord glory intentionally. He will receive it as an offering due to his name. And there's a blessing for those who honor God. God honors them. Amen. Psalm 29. You see, the secrets behind why I always say David never lost the battle. Is not just because he was favored, no. He was a man that we have 150 psalms written of a man that gave God glory through every circumstance. Amen. Through every circumstance, persecution, pain, injustice, friends turned against him, yes. betrayals. Yes. But at the end of each psalm, 
you find him giving God glory. Amen. Yeah. So it says here, Psalm 29, verse 1 and verse 2. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. And I believe these are the angels of God. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Then he says, give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Amen. Or ascribe glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. When we come before the king and we worship and hallow him, it is there you see and receive a snapshot of the revelation of who God is. It is the revelation of who God is that sustains you even in the waiting room. It is the revelation of who God is that has kept me down through the years. And so I say to people, yes, you have faith for the promise, but if you don't catch a snapshot of a revelation of who God is, you can faint. You can faint before the finish. It is knowing who God is, and that's not up to God, that's up to you. As you ascribe glory and you say, holy, holy, when you look up, you will see a different revelation. How the angels are saying holy, holy day and night is not because they're stuck record. It's because every time they look up because they're surrounding the glory throne, they see a different aspect of the beauty, of the glory, of the majesty, of the wisdom, of the counsel, of the might, of the love of God. And they praise him again and say holy. And they open up their eyes, they see something and they praise him again, they say holy. And they keep worshiping him day and night because they have the opportunity to see day and night the wisdom, the glory, the majesty of the King of Kings. That's what worship does. You see, people who don't worship a living God, what happens is they don't get a snapshot of the living King. They don't get a snapshot of who he is. So they don't ascribe glory to him. And it takes the Holy Spirit. It is a grace. And so you must make up your mind, I will bless the Lord. And as you praise him, and you say, Lord, I want to enter into your presence and give you glory due. And as you bow before him, he will also give you another snapshot of who he is. And that snapshot can keep you for years. Because now your faith is not only based on the word, on what he spoke, it is based on the person who spoke the word. And when you get a snapshot of the character of God, that's when you can say, I love the Lord, he heard my voice. That's when you can say, I will bless the Lord at all times. That's when you begin to say that even though I'm Jacob, 20 years he was in the back bush, or 21 years he was held unjustly, amen, yeah. building another kingdom yeah. why did he bow to the gods of labor because he knew something about the living king he had an encounter even before he got there an yeah. encounter of angels and he knew there is only one living god so he never bowed no matter what happened no matter what he was looking for he never looked for the shortcuts he never looked for the accounts he never looked to any other way out he only no, went no. through the way of god because he had seen something about the glory of god you see woe is the christian that doesn't worship god because you will not see the God you worship. You will not understand the God you worship. You will not receive a revelation of the God you worship. And you will look at others on their knees bowing. You will look at them crying and you wonder what have they seen because they are worshipping believers. They are seeing something because it is the privilege of the king to reveal himself. It is God who not just reveal himself. He can reveal himself to the whole world and everybody will know that he is God. But he says no. When you come before me by faith, amen, and you believe in me, now give me glory. And Jesus said, hallow him, hallow him, hallowed be your name. Hallow him, praise him, worship him, take out your time. And as you're worshiping him, the spirit of God will get into the habit of revealing himself to you, of revealing Jesus to you. And it is that revelation of Jesus and of the Father that keeps you strong even when you are weak, that keeps you going even when you are down. That's what it is. That's what it is. Amen? So give unto the Lord glory. We give him tithe, we give him offering, yes. then we want to withhold our praise, we want to withhold our thanks. Meanwhile, he didn't come to save our tithe and offering, he came to save us, he came to save you. Yes. And so if you don't give him glory, you stole it from the coffers of heaven, you stole it from the courts of heaven, you stole it from the throne room, you stole it the glory due. There is a place and a time that's been ascribed to each person. Each one appears in Zion. So imagine the appointment was for unity in the church to come mm -hmm. and for us to give Amen. him glory. Amen. Whether it is five minutes or 10 minutes or one hour. When we show up, yes. even when nobody else shows up but you did, mm -hmm. the Lord blesses you. Amen. I love that about God. Amen. Whether you come or we don't come, or somebody comes and doesn't, it's irrelevant. If you come, 
you receive the reward. Amen. If you praise, you receive the reward. Amen. If you bless, if you give him the glory, then the Lord reveals himself to you. The Lord is always willing and always looking to restore your life. Amen. Amen. He's always willing and looking. And the reason I'm saying that is because Jesus came to save us, which is restoration. Amen. Restoration includes everything soterious. It includes your physical, your spiritual, your emotional, your practical, amen, your financial, your marital, name it, needs. The needs that God himself created us to have from the Garden of Eden. Yeah. The Bible tells us in the garden there was provision, there was protection, there was food, there was instruction, there was a purpose, amen, there was partnership. So everything needed for a man and woman's life has been put in the garden. But what happened was they were defrauded out of it when they sinned, amen, intentionally. And so everything that's been stolen from your life, a platform was given somewhere through sin. A platform was given through personal sin, through family sin. A platform was given through the sin of the nations. A platform was given. And so anything we lose, we don't just lose, amen, unfairly. It's because sometimes a platform has been given. Every time, should I say, a platform has been given. But Jesus said that what? The thief cometh, John 10, 10. Amen. To steal, kill, and destroy. But I have what come that you may have life and that more abundant. And so he came to restore your life. And so this week, we're going to focus on praying. And I'm encouraging you to pray with us, amen, so that God will restore your life. We're going to have a prayer meeting even on Wednesday evenings because the Lord says, don't wait Sunday to Sunday because we're a new church. We're still trying to get things organized. Amen. We are going to be praying, praise the Lord, that in Jesus' name, God will restore your life. God will restore your life, beginning with restoring your joy. Why? Joy is the bucket with which you draw. You see, everything you need to be restored in your life, you can't draw out or draw up that grace or that um, breakthrough if you don't have joy. And so what the devil goes for is joy because he knows that joy is the container with which you draw in salvation. You draw in salvation. Glory be to God. Amen. So let's read the book of Isaiah. And then we're going to go to the book of Ruth. Amen. The book of Isaiah 12, it tells us that with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And so the wells of salvation are deep. The wells of salvation are flowing with life. Praise God. Amen. They are flowing with healing. Isaiah 12, verse 3. It says, therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. That word is soterious. And in that day, you will say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his deeds among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Praise the Lord. Then it also says in verse 5, sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. So it says, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Now imagine a well of living water. You need a container in order to draw water. So some people's containers is like a cup full. Other people's containers is a bucket full. Other people's containers, amen, is what, what else can we draw water? A barrel full, praise God, amen, a barrel full. So contain the container, the depth or the measurement of your container is based on your joy. So it's so important you have joy. Because the enemy understands that it's with joy you're going to draw water from the wells of salvation. And the wells of salvation are the wells of life, are the blessings of restoration of life that Jesus came to give you and to die for. He said, I have come that you may have life. Now, eternal life is not just a state of you living eternally. The eternal life is everything attached to life. So everything about you should live. Amen? Yes, Everything about you, your body should be alive. And so healing comes to destroy the life in the body, which means the health. Amen? Your finances should be alive. And so when your finances are constricted, why? There's a spirit attacking it, constricting the finances like a boa constrictor. You understand? And so that power has to be broken so that they, the, the finances flow. Amen? That is life. Praise God. And that is your provision. Everything concerning your partnerships. God said to Adam, it's not good for man to be alone. Adam didn't say it. God said it. Praise God. Yeah. And God brought partnership. And so if partnerships are struggling, why there's a spirit of death that is strangulating the partnership. Do you yeah. see? And the Bible says, with joy, you draw water from the wells of salvation. So anything you need from the Lord, there is a salvation in the well. But the issue is, with what will you draw out that water? You see, you draw out that water with joy. It is joy that is the container. And so the Bible tells us in Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so when you have no strength to draw, you are dry. 
When you have no strength to draw, you are, you, are, you can't be healed. When you have no strength to draw, it's like you don't have the faith capacity to bring in the thing you need or you're asking God for. Because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. The just shall live by faith. And so he attacks our faith and he attacks your joy. You see? So today we're asking God to restore joy because we want to pull in everything the devil has stolen from us. Come on, people of God. You want to pull in everything he's stolen from you. The things that you know about, the things you don't know about, the things that you desire, that God knows and has written in his word for you, but you've never lived it before. You've never seen it before. You can still ask for it based on the fact it is the Father's will. Amen? Amen. But you need joy. You need joy. And it's that joy that bubbles up. It's that joy that the disciples had. The Bible says they were persecuted and with joy they went down to their, to their, to their company. So they were able to keep on preaching the gospel, not because they're just faithful alone, but because they had so much joy in Jesus. They had so much joy in the miracles. They had so much joy in what they saw Jesus do, yeah. even before he died, that they kept on preaching the gospel, even though they beat them, they flagged them, they put them in prison. Yeah. As soon as they come out, it was with joy they preached the gospel. Yeah. They were joyful. And a joyful believer is a fruitful believer. Yeah. When you are joyful, you'll be fruitful. Yeah. But when you're not joyful, that lack of joy is what is strangulating yeah. your capacity to take in. You see? It's strangulating your capacity to receive from God. And so the enemy embitters us. And this is what he did to Ruth. Amen? He embitters us so that we will not have the capacity. So our womb, our spiritual womb, will be full of bitterness instead yeah. of joy. Yeah. So when you see what he did to Naomi, and you see what it, sorry, when he did to Naomi, yes, yeah. and you see what he did to Hannah, they said in bitterness of soul they cried out. Yeah. If you read First Samuel chapter 1, you yeah. read that the story of Hannah. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go there because of time. But you read that Hannah was in bitter. And yeah. she first of all had to get the bitterness out. Yeah. I'm asking you what's in your womb. You are asking God for things, but you're full of bitterness. You are asking God for Do you know bitterness drives people away? It drives the presence of God away. It drives the people away. And so many times we're saying, Lord, where is my marriage? But at the same time, who are you? Are you a joyful person? Because there's an aroma around you. Yeah. I remember one of my friends, amen, the day, the times of getting married, and the Lord spoke to her, I think two weeks before her husband came, that shake off this kind of uh, morning, uh, he said, uh, this morning cloak. God told her, shake it off and dance. Ah. He told her, shake off this thing and dance. And she was dancing a little bit. And then she said, the Lord said, get out of your bed and dance before me. Shake off this sorrow garment. It's a garment that the enemy puts yeah. on. So you will not have the power, the joy to draw. Wow. You see, when you're joyful, even strangers will look at you. Why is she smiling? Yeah. Why is she so happy? Why is he happy? When you are joyful, it's, it, it is infectious. So what are you infecting people with? You see, the minute we are sorrowful, we infect people with sorrow. Yeah. People say, what is wrong with you? Why are you so down? So joy is important. And so Hannah had to pour out her spirit of bitterness. Yeah. And the Bible says her face was no longer sad. Yeah. And the Lord remembers her. Mm. So sometimes you have to say, Lord, restore my joy. Because where I am right now, I've got no joy. I, oh, I've been there. I've been there. Three days I said, Lord, I'm not speaking. I'm not praying. Now that's a long time for me. It's a long time because with me, my father is my everything. Yeah. So it's like, Lord, if I'm not talking to you, it's a big deal. Do you understand? And I was so embittered by what I was going through. I was so embittered with my uh, with my ex-husband. Amen. I was so embittered by what I thought was an injustice financially. I was embittered as I said, God, no. I've been praying for five years, and this is what you give me. I'm not talking. Amen. But what the Lord did is through worship, He had to bring the joy, get the bitterness out, yes. and put the joy back. Wow. And as he got the bitterness out yeah. and put my joy back, then I have the strength to bring forth the promises of God. Mm -hmm. You see, so many times we ask God for things, but he's saying, what will you draw? If Are you dry? If you're dry of joy, you are dry of strength. Mm -hmm. You are dry of strength. So your faith has latched onto the promise, but your strength, remember, it says Sarah received, believe God to receive strength to conceive. So she had to get rid of that negative attitude she was carrying about. She had to get rid of it. And Abraham was giving God glory, praising the Lord every day and saying, Lord, and then he tells us in Romans 4 that he was giving God glory, not growing weak in faith. So what weakens our faith is lack of joy. It's not just the devil. It's not just circumstances. It's lack of joy. We're supposed to put songs on. We put on the news. 
We're supposed to put praise and worship on. We put on things that are bad news. Listen, you have to determine what comes into your environment. Amen. I'm very specific. Sometimes even some adverts, they annoy me so much. I put it on mute until the, 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 the program comes back. Because I don't want to hear all this diabetes. Um, you know what I mean? Yes. They're always advertising sickness. Yes. And I'm like, I'm not having you invoking sickness. Every advert, it can bring diabetes. It can bring heart failure. It can bring this. Let me tell you about this. I said, no. You cannot put that over me. I mute it. When the advert has gone, my show comes back, then I sit down. I don't. Because I, I, it's the spirit. Amen. If you keep hearing something, you will start giving it attention. You keep hearing about the bad news. You keep hearing about the bad things. You keep whatever is in your environment. We live in an age of technology, and yet we're the most joyless believers. And I've said this for many years. There was a church I went to, a wonderful church. The man of God was preaching so well. The people were like, I said, the woman of God. I said, hey, where's the joy of salvation in this church? The man was preaching so well. So I realized, I said, Lord, so these people, they have all the revelation. They know how to prophesy. They know how to do it. They know how to do everything. But they've got no joy. We got born again and we were all happy. Remember the days you got born again. Yes. You were just happy to be in God's presence. Yes. You were just happy to celebrate Jesus. That was it. We didn't have all of this. We didn't even have Facebook. Nothing. But you had joyful believers. Now you've got social media. There's no joy. This, where's the joy? The joy is what gives you the strength to draw. Yes. Don't forget this. So anytime you see you have no strength to draw, you have to ask God to restore your joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So I want us to go to the book of Ruth because if I go through every scripture now, it will take time. Ruth chapter 1, verse 20. It says, but she said to them, do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Wow. Naomi means pleasant and Mara means bitter. You see, she started to label herself by her experience. She started to label herself. She started to allow what had taken years of frustration, bitterness, loss of husbands, loss of sons, to label her, to label her. Now, am I saying that it wasn't tough? It was tough. But after you've mourned the loss, you must get your joy back. Yeah. After you've mourned the loss of your husband, or you've mourned the loss of the opportunity, or you've mourned the loss of the things that you desired that you didn't see or that you lost out on. After you've wept about it, because you will weep, and then God will say, I will restore you. The next step God will tell you about is your restoration. But you see, you need joy. So if you're still looking back, you have to decide, am I going to be looking in grief? Am I going to be walking in grief or in regret? Amen. Or am I going to believe God for restoration? Amen. Because if you're in grief and regret, you're looking back. Yeah. You're looking here. You're saying, this is what I lost. This is what I... So you're always here. You're not looking expectantly forward to restoration. You're looking in the real view mirror. The rear view mirror. And so she said, don't call me Naomi Pleasant anymore. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly. And so bitterness was marking her life. You see? Mm -hmm. And then the Lord wanted to restore her. So he had to restore Ruth, who still had hope. Yeah, he did not restore Naomi until he restored Ruth because Ruth was the one who had the bucket to draw. Ruth was the one who still had faith for better. Ruth was the one who said, I will follow you and I will serve you. Ruth was the one who was saying, Your God will be my God. When you die, I will die. So Ruth was saying, I'm leaving my past behind. And I'm moving forward into the unknown. Mm. Even though you are a complaining woman, I still believe better is ahead of me yes. than behind me. That is a woman who still had the well. Mm. A woman says, let me go and glean in the yes. field. She still had the well of hope that better is before me than behind me. Amen. This is the way you draw out your restoration. Amen. So God is saying today the prayer is, Lord, restore my, my joy. Jesus restore my joy. Because if you don't have joy, we can pray about the devil and everything else. If you don't have faith that greater is ahead, that greater is the one in you than he that's in the world, that greater is your latter end than the beginning. If you don't have faith that even though you've waited years, days, disappointments, you've gone through the valleys of the shadow of death. If you don't have hope, like David said, I would have lost hope unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen. Praise God. In Psalm 27, if you don't have that kind of hope, you will give up. You must understand that everyone that comes to God and Jesus Christ ends up in the better place and ends up in glory. Amen. I love that. When you study the scriptures, you begin to see that, wow, 
Anyone that comes to God, they may start off small, they may start off defended, they may start off in a bad place, they always end up in the high place. As long as you stick with Jesus, 2 Corinthians 2 14, he says, Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen. Always leads you, meaning triumph is not just victory, it's the celebration of victory. God will always lead you in celebration of victory if you stay in Christ Jesus. The issue is people come out. They come out of Christ. They come out of the anointing. Christ is the anointed one. They come out of the anointing. And in the anointing is fullness of joy. So this is the issue. So we have to tackle this. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. This is where many people are stuck. They're stuck here in their joyless lives, stuck without a smile, stuck without hope. And God is saying, I want to restore you, but you have nothing to draw. You have no bucket. You have no, what did you call it, barrel? You have no cup. And John 16, 20, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. And so he's saying when you go through the labor pains, yes, you are in sorrow. When you're laboring to bring forth a yeah. promise or to yeah. bring forth a blessing or to bring forth a child, most women do not start laughing on the labor wall. Yeah. Amen. Like you've been laboring for some years, obviously sorrow, but he's saying your sorrow shall be turned to joy. And then he said, God himself wants your joy to be full. Amen. Full. Amen. Can you see? So he doesn't want half joy. He said, your joy must be full. He said, ask because he wants your joy to be full. Every area that's joyless, the Lord wants to restore it, basically. Amen. That's what Jesus was said, saying. He said, every area, the Father, ask me, because he wants your joy to be full. Mm. He doesn't want half joy. He doesn't want cup full joy. He wants your joy to overflow. Glory to God, amen, in Jesus' name. So I'm saying this, when you ask God to restore your joy, you understand not having joy will cost you. It costs you time. The well of life is deep. Whatever we draw out of it, we draw, amen, with what we call the joy of God. Now, in the Old Testament, they didn't have, they had the joy of God when the Spirit of God came down. The joy of God is a fruit of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. The Spirit of God did not dwell in them, so it was very difficult. We have the Holy Ghost in us. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you as a child of God. As soon as you're born again, the Spirit of God dwells in you. And he's the one that cooks up joy. So when you say, restore my joy, the Spirit of God starts bubbling out of you. Do you see? All of the crevices of bitterness, of anxiety, he takes them off. You have to break those things and allow your womb, I call it your spiritual womb, to be full of joy. He doesn't want your spiritual womb to be full of sorrow, to be full of sadness, because he knows it is taking your strength. Yeah. How many times can you find yourself that like, I can't even pray because I've got no joy anymore? Yeah. You're so That's devastated, true. you just go to bed. Yeah. You just eat, you sit mindlessly before the TV, and you just sleep. Why? Because your joy was snapped out. And then as you get back up in the morning, and as you go into the presence of God, the first thing he does is put in comfort. He puts in assurance, and he puts in joy. So disconnecting from God is very, 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 um, it costs us. And what we have to ask God for is joy, because that's where the short circuiting is. Amen? And so Abraham, of course he lost joy on the way. But he realized, my issue is, I'm becoming too joyless. And so the Bible tells us in Romans 4, he began to give God the glory. When you give God, the, the Spirit of God gets engaged. He gets involved. And he too, the angels get involved. Everyone in heaven gets involved. When you give God the glory, the joyful environment begins to be created. Because now you're doing what God loves. And now he engages with you. Do you see? Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be our prayer now in the name of Jesus. For the sake of time, I want us to pray that Lord restore my Jesus joy. In the name of Jesus. Restore my Jesus joy. The joy of Jesus. He never lost his joy. The joy of Jesus is the joy of the Holy Spirit. Restore my joy. That is the prayer. Restore my joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You're saying to the Lord, restore my joy, which is the strength with which you draw. In the name of Jesus. So Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray right now that every single one under the sound of my voice, the Lord will restore your Jesus joy. He will restore the joy of the presence. He said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Amen restore unto me the joy of my salvation said David how many of us you've lost joy yeah. of your salvation no. the wonder of your salvation 
the wonder of being called a child of God, the wonder of being saved, the wonder of having a hope for today and for tomorrow, the wonder of not having to live like the world lives without hope, always having to look to a government, never having any other plan, always having to look to somebody to help you sometime, but not realizing that, listen, you have the God of the, of, of the universe on yeah. your side, Amen. and he has got a plan over and above their plan. Amen? And so you don't have to depend on them. That is joy, that Lord, even though they're dealing with me unjustly, I don't have to depend on them. So Amen. many things have happened to me, even family things, unjust things, but I'm not relying on those things. Amen. Because I have someone who's given me a better plan. And so I better follow that one, praise God. He's going to sit down there and be fighting useless wars. Amen? Praise the Lord. And so joy does a lot. It helps you escape the unnecessary things that the enemy throws at your life. Amen? So in the name of Jesus, Father, we are praying today. In the time we have left, I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice that your joy shall be restored. The joy of salvation. The joy of the presence of God. The joy of the Lord in Jesus' name. That the Lord will restore joy to your life. He will restore it right now. Recover your joy in Jesus' name. The joy of singing songs. The joy of praising God. The joy of prayer. The joy of reading the word of God. The joy of the relationship, of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we are just praying that, Lord, restore our joy. The Jesus joy in Jesus' name. The joy of being a child of God. The joy of doing ministry. Some of you used to love doing ministry. And now, all of a sudden, you don't want it to do it anymore. Amen. Yes, sometimes it can be frustrating. Today was frustrating in some times. But there's a joy of seeing people's lives restored. May you receive back your joy of ministry, your joy of mission, your joy over your assignment, your joy at work, your joy in study. In the name of Jesus Christ, for all of our young people, may the Lord give you joy over your study. In the name of Jesus Christ, joy, amen, praise God, to discover new things, to do new things, but also to be able to be consistent in the things you've been called to do. In Jesus' name, we ask the Lord for joy. Be restored now. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord restore the joy of the Lord and even heal you as you're being restored right now. I sense the Spirit of God saying some of you are being healed physically because joy is renewing you. Yeah. Joy is restoring you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. There shall be joy in your house. There shall be joy and gladness. The Bible says that he shall restore the voice of joy and gladness of the bride and of the bridegroom in the name of Jesus Christ. And so God loves to hear joy in your family. We pray that Lord restore joy in my house. Restore joy in my house. In the name of Jesus. Restore joy to my family. Restore joy to my husband, to my children. Be my wife in the name of Jesus. Restore joy, Lord God. There needs to be joy. Some of us, we go to work with a long face. May the Lord restore unto you joy of a new day. Joy of new opportunities. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord restore joy. Father God, restore the joy of your people. Restore the joy of life. Restore the joy to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Restore the Jesus joy so that with joy we draw from the wells of salvation. With joy we draw out our healing. With joy we draw out our breakthrough. With joy we draw out our blessing. With joy we draw out, amen, the promises of God in the name of Jesus Christ. It is in the pathway of joy. The Bible says, and they shall come to Mount Zion with joy, amen, with joy singing in the name of Jesus Christ. And so may you come into your promised destination with joy in the name of Jesus Christ. It is the joy that strengthens you to stand. It is the joy that strengthens you to press on in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, restore the hope in Jesus' name. Restore faith for everyone under the sound of my voice because they have joy in Jesus' name. You will be able to generate strength because of the joy of God. You will generate faith because of the joy of God. You will generate power because of the joy of God. You will generate encounters because of the joy of God. You will generate the blessing Amen. because of the joy of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for every person that they will have joy in Jesus' mighty name. We give you glory and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in Jesus' name. We thank the Lord that joy is being restored. Joy is being restored. Joy is being restored. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. There's always somebody joy less in the middle of joy, yeah. but I will not steal my joy. Hallelujah. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Lord, I say thank you. We give you the glory and the praise, Lord. For joy, for joy, restore the river of joy. The river of life begins to flow. Every form of barrenness is being broken now. I see yokes of barrenness being broken as joy is beginning to fill up your soul, is beginning to fill up your spirit. The Lord destroys every yoke of barrenness. With joy, hallelujah, you shall draw waters from yes. the well of fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ, when the joy of God, amen, is restored to you, 
blindness shall disappear, the blindness shall flee. The Bible says in Psalm 30, uh, in Isaiah 35, that sighing and flee shall flee away because of the joy of God. The sighing, amen, shall flee away. Blindness is broken and shall flee away because of the renewed joy in your soul and in your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall recover all by the joy of God, by the strength of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall be accelerated because of the joy of God and of his presence and of his power in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I see Lord releasing people from powers of pain in Jesus' name. There are pains that people are going through in your body, amen, in your mind, amen. The Spirit of God is saying right now, by the power of joy, he's destroying the stronghold of pain. He's destroying the stronghold of barrenness. He's destroying the stronghold of sickness. He's destroying the stronghold of delay. He's destroying the strongholds, amen, that the enemy has placed upon your life and the yokes because of the joy of God. You are breaking free now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we say thank you for restoring our joy. Restore the joy of every member of Unity City Church family. Restore the joy of this generation of believers. Restore our joy as people. Restore our joy as ministers. Restore our joy as parents. Restore our joy for God as children and as youth. In the name of Jesus, restore our joy in Jesus' mighty name. We give you the glory yes. and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord. The Lord is restoring joy. And as he restores joy, he's healing. He's bringing forth healing and health. And I saw barrenness being broken. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Stagnancy being destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord. That there shall now be an inflow and an outflow. That is a healthy life. An inflow and an outflow. The Holy Spirit is a living water. He's a living well. He flows. He doesn't want any stagnancy. Lord, I thank you. By the power of joy, you have revived your people. By the power of joy, you've restored us. By the power of joy, you begin to flow with the blessings of God, begin to flow. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the power of miracles, of signs and of wonders. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord God. I just pray over your marriages even now. I pray for wedding joy yes. to be restored back to the people of God, yes. for wedding joy to be restored back to the church, for wedding joy to be so stuck back to the family, for joy of celebration, yes. joy of union, joy of restoration, joy of new unions coming forth. Yes. I pray that blessing upon the body of Christ. I pray that blessing upon the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, that the voice of the bride and the bridegroom shall be restored now in Jesus' name, that there shall be joy in our bedrooms. There shall be joy in our families. There shall be joy in our living rooms. There shall be joy in every aspect and every room of our house. There shall be joy in the house of our children. There shall be joy in the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us in Jesus' name that joy and thanksgiving shall be found in us, hallelujah, and the voice of thanksgiving. In Isaiah 45, Lord, I say, sorry, Isaiah 50, in Jesus' mighty name, that God shall restore you and shall restore your family. He shall restore wedding joy back to the church. He shall restore wedding joy back to your life. He shall restore marriages. He shall restore love. He shall restore laughter in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the families of God shall be joyful again. Shall be joyful again in the presence of God. In Jesus' name. No more Mara. No more Mara. The original name given to her was Naomi Pleasant. The enemy exchanged it for Mara. But the Lord makes a double exchange today and gives you back your joy, your strength, and your blessing, and your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Gives you back your connection that will be able to restore you back to joy. Ruth was the connection. Without Ruth, Naomi would never have been restored. And without Naomi, Ruth would not be restored. No. So may God give you a divine connection that without them, you will not be restored. And without you, they will not be restored. Amen. Because Ruth had the bucket to draw. Mm. Mary was spent out. So if God connects you with a joyful believer, with yes. a faithful believer, that is the blessing of God. You don't now say to them, oh, you're too happy all the time. Listen, they're your way out. Mm. <laughs> they're your way out because they have a bucket to draw. Amen. And whatever blessing comes into their life, it impacts your life. Can you see? And so there's a double win when we connect as covenant believers in Jesus' name. So may the Lord grant you covenant friendships, covenant blessings, and covenant unions, marriages, and restore your joy. And may they be, what do they call it? It's a symbiotic blessing. Amen? Of the two of you receiving something from God that was lost because of joy in Jesus' name.
we are praised. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let us give praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Like I said, on Wednesday, we will start, I believe, between 6.30 and I think 7 o'clock, but amen. And we have to continue because they're all put it on my spirit that this week, he wants us to press in before December comes and Amen. ask for everything that is due us back. Amen. Everything the enemy has Amen. stolen. He wants us to ask God to restore our life, to restore your life. 